welcome back so in the last lecture we have seen how to install appium server and how to launch iphone simulator and deploy the app what we want to automate in iphone by compiling it in xcode right so in this lecture let us try to write our first appium automation code and then see how it can invoke the iphone and deploy the app in it okay so we have done all that manually from xcode so let's see how can we do that using appium code so for that i will set up an appium maven project and install appium related jars and then we can get started with our first program so i will be choosing the eclipse editor to perform all the client side code activities okay so let me go back to Eclipse and let's get started with new project. I'll choose Maven project so that we can quickly get the dependencies from the Maven repositories. Maven project and I would select simple project by skipping archetype selection. So the group ID I would call as RSA Appium ios let me put small letters perfect you see that one maven project is created for us and all the ready-made structure of the project is ready just because you are using maven template now you need to get the dependencies of appium so as you are using java as your client language so you should get the java client libraries of appium Okay, based upon the language you choose that related libraries, you need to get it. Okay, so let's go back to Chrome browser and get that work for us. Where is it? Yeah, sorry. So um, just type Appium Java Client. And this is their official website of GitHub, which gives you all the information about Java related libraries for Appium. So if you scroll down, they have given a simple instructions on how to install this Java client libraries for your Maven project. So first they were asking to add this repository. Okay, so this repository holds the information about Appium jars. So let's add this dependencies into our uh, project. So, so you just need to add it in the pom.xml, right? This is a step one. And the next, it is they are asking us to add this dependency Java client. This is the main core jar what we need because it have all the related methods to automate. And if it is a JavaScript or Python client, you will see the related to that specific uh, library names. Okay, right. So dependencies inside this you have to provide your Java client dependency so you can get the latest version whatever available so Appium will frequently release new version that does not mean that old version is outdated if there are any bug fixes on the version they release they will just give patches and release a new one so you will see different version whenever you are trying to do this okay don't panic about that code functionality will never change so if there is any breaking change then you will see updated video from me again okay all right so there is a readme document here which tells us that what version i have to use now currently so it shows 7.4.1 release and updated release notes so let's go with that version you just need to provide that 7.4.1 perfect save your project and make sure you compile your project um you can do it with project build so build automatically is ticked that means whenever you provide any new information automatically build will get triggered if not please go ahead and tick this check mark so it will build for you right so now you have all the dependencies what you need to get started with your code to automate right so let me go back to source test java under this i would um, create a new class new um base ios test
okay so first of all you have to tell to appium that what platform version you want to use to automate your app and what is the device name because when you do in iphone there are a lot of devices available right different iphone 12 13 14 11 10 9 and platform versions are also different and uh, what app you are trying to automate so all the details first you have to clearly tell in form of code then only appium can send all these client information whatever you write here to appium server i told you right in the last lecture we also downloaded an appium server so basically this server is now listening at 4723 port for the code so now it is your duty to give all the information what you need like which ios version which phone which app everything and what all you need to automate all the details from your java client code and that you have to redirect your code to this port if you do this that's all you have to do okay appium now will take care of the rest of the things it will interpret your code and it will make sure it opens that iphone version ios platform everything whatever you are requiring and it will deploy the app whatever you mentioned and it will automate all the actions which you mentioned in the code that's the duty of appium server okay now so let's write a code give to give all these capabilities and send our information to this 4723 so that is the first and basic goal to write any appium test okay so all your requirements you should mention in form of desired capabilities so there is a class called desired capabilities so let me create object for that class so that class uh, provide all the features for us to mention the details what we need okay so move your cursor and import this right now using this object we will try to provide all the information what we want so when you do capabilities dot then uh, you will see a method called set capability okay right so now all the capabilities what we are doing is respective to mobile right so you can say like this mobile capability type dot you can import a package related to that first import mobile capability type this is coming from appium java client okay so first we have to mention platform version let's start with that you can write in any order our ultimate goal is to provide all the necessary details so when you do here you can see platform version right so this is the capability type you have to select and you have to give the platform version what version you want to automate so iphone 12 supports 14.2 okay now you might get a question that how would i know which version iphone 12 or tomorrow iphone 16 or 17 will come how would i know which version it supports right so for that there is a command which will tell you all the details okay first let's go to that command and uh, get this information from there so that uh, you will feel happy that i know how would i get this before i proceed further okay now i'll open the terminal right so first before you run any command you make sure you install carthage there is one package called carthage you have to get that package in your system to uh, install any apps in ios okay so this dependency is must to have in your mac operating system if you want to install any apps and this is highly suggested in their appium official document as well okay so you can install this with this command brew install carthage so i already have in my machine that's why it said um, you have already installed so let me note down this command in our word document so before you run desired capabilities make sure you run this command 
so that dependency will get installed right next and now you want to know uh, which version your iphone 12 supports right so for that there is one simple command instruments hyphen s devices so when you give this command this will tell what all iphone simulators you have in your system okay so all these simulators will be downloaded when you install xcode so with the xcode all these will come so this command will tell you now what all simulators your xcode supports and what is the version of those simulators okay let's see right so these are the different uh, simulators like iphone 11 12 all these are the phones you have in your xcode so now we thought of doing iphone 12 pro right and you can see that 14.2 this is the version of your mobile okay and if you observe there is one alphanumeric character which is called udid so this identifies your iphone 12 pro uniquely this is like bundle id okay so this is very important because we will use this as well in our uh, script at one point we need this okay so this we call it as a bundle id i will again come back and use this later so for now you understood that it's a 14.2 version that's all we need now for us to get started okay all right so let's give another capability now capabilities dot so you can copy actually same code and then this time version is given let me give the device name this time so what is the device name we are trying to automate it's iphone make sure you give the name exactly even if you give any small letter or capital letter in the middle then it will not be able to identify name should be very clear in case sense to manner okay right and we have to give another capability called automation name so this is also very important because to automate your ios apps on iphone there are different ways of doing it okay so the latest op operating systems support only ios xcui test so this is an automation provided by ios okay this is their framework so whenever ios apps are released or platform is released even appm sorry apple people have released this framework to automate their ios platforms so what does appm is doing appm underlyingly using apple provided test framework to automate okay so by default appm will not have permission to automate ios apps right so this is provided by apple this is one of the testing framework provided by apple to automate their apps so underlyingly we are using that framework right so that information you have to give what is that automation framework name select automation name and here so automation name dot you see these are the different frameworks android ui automator 2 is the testing framework provided by android team to automate android apps so appm underlyingly use android ui automator framework to automate android apps similarly for ios there are two frameworks espresso and xui test okay and this is supporting the latest versions so we are going to use this framework underlyingly to support our automation simple and next um if you want to give any launch timeout because sometimes app may take few seconds to load before that your test will start failing right so you can give some timeout that wait until five seconds to launch the app if you don't give this information then immediately appm will go to next step before launching the app and that will cause confusion so these are like uh, some common things which people uh, use 
but this mobile capability may not support this for that you have to give ios see all these are present in their official documentation just don't worry that how would trainer know all these okay these are the details we have in their uh, documentation we i just gone through this and explaining you how things will work here launch timeout and you can see now if you wonder why would i use ios mobile capability type here it clearly tells that written type for this property is ios mobile capability type so that means if you try to use this for android it will not work okay so this is special property only available for um, ios so let's give around 50 seconds like this so this is what default they suggest right these are milliseconds and you can convert into seconds i think it's in 50 around okay and every command when we try to execute like click send keys get text swipe scroll whenever you perform all these events there should be one command timeout okay we should allow that command to finish now for example maybe in the next lecture i will show how to scroll when you scroll it might take some time in app to get scrolled down maybe few seconds two three seconds to scroll the page right when you are scrolling so if you don't provide any command timeout then immediately it will go to the next command before scrolling completes so by default apm guys suggest as a 12 seconds is something they want us to have a command timeout so let's go and give it that capabilities I always give this spelling mistake. <laughs> so this command timeout is the generic one and it applies to Selenium and Appium as well. So this is not special mobile capability. So you can directly provide key value here. Okay. And it will take around 12 seconds is what they were suggesting. All right, guys. So one last thing what you have to give is which app you want to deploy. So that is most important, right? Until now we discussed like which version, which device, what automation name and timeouts. But we did not give the information on what app you want to go it, right? So when I say app, I told you in the last lecture that we have to deploy an app which have a .app extension. So that .app extension file will be created when you compile your project in Xcode and then under products, you will see this file. Okay. Now you can go to show in finder and copy that file here and place it in anywhere. So right now I have placed it in my desktop. Okay. So it's in my desktop now. So I will give the path of that .app file. So before you provide path, make sure you compile it using Xcode. If somebody give you directly .app file, just don't blindly use that. Okay, as I explained in the last lecture, go and uh, set it up in uh, Xcode, compile it for your required version and then only use it. So set capability and this is obviously mobile specific right so we have to use mobile compatibility type dot app so this works for android as well so that's why we are not giving specially ios compatibility okay and you can give the path of your app so for me it's in users rahul shetty desktop i think ui kit that app name basically catalog dot app so that's all so this is the path of the app so with these details now we have given everything what we need right now what we should do one last step what we can do is to send all this information to our appm server okay then only appm server can interpret your code and launch the app in the iphone you cannot directly interact with your iPhone. You should send all these details to the Appium server. So how do you send that information? So you need to create an object for a class called iOS driver. 
iOS driver right so this iOS driver class expects two arguments move your cursor right so now it expects two arguments one argument is this capabilities object right so once you give this capabilities object all the details what all you set here will be sent to this class the first argument what it expects is the server url okay so where is your server your server is in your local host right we saw that ip address 00, 0. so you can simply say local host and it is listening at port 4723 isn't it where is that server here it is you see appium started at server 4723 so the same details you have to give here and wd slash hub this is the actual url where your server is listening okay import this java.net package and then uh where is this remove argument yeah capabilities right so now observe carefully we just created object for ios driver class okay driver if you are aware of selenium we just do like web driver driver equals to new chrome driver right and using driver object you will automate similarly that is on chrome browser we used chrome driver now i want to automate ios apps in my iphone so i am using ios driver equals to new ios driver so it is clear so this class will help you to get all the actions to perform an ios app but this class expects two arguments so why it is expecting because by default ios driver do not have the ability to talk directly to iphone so what these guys are saying so give the url where your server is listening so we will redirect your request to that server right and here is where our server port number so that details we have given and what i have to redirect that also we have to give right so these are the capabilities we nicely set up and we stored and given all the knowledge to this capabilities object so this object also you will send as a second argument okay and now when you run this test um, it will interpret your capabilities object and it will send this object to this server where appium is sitting now appium server will take this capability object understands that okay this is the version this guy need this is the device name and this is the app okay let me launch it it will go and launch iphone and deploy this app and it will give you the output so this is the first and basic step you have to do before you perform any iOS automation using Appium. So now let's run this test and see how the magic of iPhone invocation will happen and how the app will get open. Okay. So right click run as Java application and let's come back to our server. You can monitor the logs and you see that iPhone have invoked and you can see the respective logs it's trying to now uh, deploy an app and invoke it let's hold on for the first time it will take some time you should be patient and here you go ui kit catalog app is successfully opened in your iphone simulator which is on 12 pro so how does that happen so the code what you executed reached the server right once server reach that code and server have executed that actions to invoke and deploy the app and you can see all the logs how it happened parallelly and if something goes wrong you can read the logs because appium guys have done a great work in showing the logs where exactly things went wrong and finally when you see 200 status and app also invoked so this is the first step before you automate anything so once you complete this from the next lecture now let's go ahead and start automating all the features of this app and do some end-to-end -end functional testing okay see you in the next lecture thank you